Welcome to the Med Conceptions podcast, a podcast about leading a healthy and more mindful life. I have the pleasure today to have with me Associate Professor at the School of Law of University of Nicosia, Dr. Yorgos Kendas. We will be talking today about politics and population health. We will also touch upon corruption and polarization. How are you doing, Dr. Yorgos? Um, thank you for having me here. And I, I, I hear that you have a very successful show and I'm happy to be part of it. So thank you. It's our pleasure to have you here. I'll say a few words about what you do so we can set the foundations. Um, Dr. Yorgos Kendas has a PhD at the University of Brussels, is an associate professor of international politics and governance at the University of Nicosia and director of a graduate program in public administration. His research interests focus on strategic governance, strategic management, European governance and politics, theories of politics and governance, conflict management. He published in peer-reviewed journals and written and co-authored a number of books. Currently, he works on a book on strategic management. So, Dr. Gendas, could you talk to us a bit about what you do? It's pretty much what you said, Andreas. And, uh, you know, uh, my, my uh, career and research uh, may be divided into two domains, distinct domains. The one is uh, international politics. Uh, the idea is to understand how uh, how how global politics work and what's their impact uh, on our on our lives, uh, on our countries, on the environment, uh, on conflict, on war and peace. But then I realized that there is something interesting to see into the state. So I turned my attention into governance, mm -hmm. and and gradually I, I realized that one of the basic problems that uh, we encounter uh, is, is the lack of, of strategic thinking, strategic thought uh, in, in public uh, governance. So, so in, in the last uh, couple of years, let's say last decade or so, I've been looking into um, strategic issues of, of public governance and their interplay uh, with the global environment. Mm -hmm. um, my focus, as, as, as you read from my resume, is in strategic management. Uh, so this is uh, the art of planning uh, for the short and the long term and, and how you, you manage uh, the public resources uh, with the public politics and how you make the best uh, over uh, the, the diminishing uh, resources and the pressures uh, on, on governments uh, for, for producing public value for, for the society. Um, and what we're about to talk today um, is not at the core of my, of my research, but lately, uh, due to the pandemic and all that external shock that we internalized for two years now, talking with my colleagues um, at, the, at the medical school, I realized that th there is a gap, there is a gap of communication between political scientists, as I am, and, and people from the medical trade. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, because let, let me give you an example. As I, as I see things standing today, um, there are a lot of uh, people coming from the medical trade uh, into politics. They are governing uh, decisions about uh, pandemic uh, measures to be taken. Mm -hmm. um, so more or less um, uh, doctors, researchers uh, make politics and, and they drive politics. Uh, the most essential elements of our life today, dealing with the pandemic uh, and all that preceded you know, this date have been driven by, uh, by experts. So um, we are turning back to what prevailed in the literature 1980s as scientific communities. So scientific communities, uh, they are uh, the, 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 uh, the, the authentic voice, uh, the gurus of, 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 of the situation, and, and, and they tell us what, uh, what, must, be, uh, what must be done. So, uh, so having this situation, um, I thought that uh, it's, it's, it's normal to, to try to see how these two traits, political science and, 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 and the medical, people uh, can communicate better, understand each other uh, better. So maybe that's a good opportunity to, to try how this works because you are working that field. Mm -hmm. You're an emerging doctor. 
uh, and you are from your pockets, you, you have the opportunity to talk to so many people. Uh, so let's try how this bridge may be built or work and inspire, hopefully, our viewers to think harder about uh, what we'll talk about today. Indeed. And I think, again, as you illustrated, it's a really important thing because public health, population health at a larger scale, it's largely influenced by politics. As you, It's something that's directly like you make a wrong political decision and then hundreds of lives, let's say, perish mm -hmm. or they don't have a good uh, health care. Um, etc. Could we talk about some examples that politics directly um, has an effect on population health? That's 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 a very good point. Um, let let's talk about employment. So uh, we are living, you know, let's 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 focus on on, on the Western world, mm -hmm. uh, open market economies, the liberal liberal uh, democracies, uh, freedoms, liberties. Uh, so. There is a combination between two things. Um, on the one hand, we talk about uh, liberties and freedoms. And on the other hand, we talk about open market economy. So these two go uh, along uh, with one another, but there is an essential conflict. If an individual doesn't have the means of survival, uh, then it's in trouble. It's in trouble of, of making uh, their way through the society. Mm -hmm. So the key to happiness, uh, it's employment, to have a good job, to have a good income, uh, to be able to buy the things that will uh, make you happy in life. So the issue of employment and unemployment, it's, it's political, it's social, but it's a health issue at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, because um, un unhappiness, as, as, as I understand, it's a source of, of, of a medical state of, of, of an individual. Uh, so governments have been trying um, many, many years now to tackle unemployment. And when there is high level of unemployment, um, there is hypothesis that there must be high, high level of unhappy people um, that's uh, an, an unhealthy somehow people, people who are not, who are depressed, uh, who are in a state of, of agony, um, so, um, so when a politician, uh, when a government, a parliament, a minister uh, is dealing with unemployment, they need maybe to have some uh, consultants, some psychologists, some experts to give them the picture to understand. Maybe they need to do some more research understanding how unemployment um, um, affects mm -hmm. um, the health state of, of the society. But... In Western societies, we are concerned with the individual. So that's the the, the, the cornerstone of liberal uh, Western liberal uh, democracy. So uh, when uh, a, politi a politician, a government, is making a decision about society, uh, this uh, decision is reduced down to the individual. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is an example that that um, sheds some light on on, on on how these two fields. Uh, may relate to one another, maybe in a surprising way, but uh, again, the pandemic um, uh, showed that it, it's, it is emerging the linkage between uh, the two. Uh, so we need to look into that bridge more. And I'm sure it's not only with the pandemic that we have seen this linkage. We could talk about here uh, the example of, uh, of Cyprus in 1974 with the invasion uh, of Turkey. Um, and how that affected, let's say, the health of the population then and the population now, because after the invasion, 200,000 200, um, refugees, about 25% of our population, if I'm saying this correct, uh, were refugees in their own country. Yes, yes, indeed, yes. I, I, I talked to you before about my interest in international politics. Mm -hmm. well, a central element of international politics is war. Uh, but when there is war, there is um, a tragedy. And, you know, in international relations, we look about the power games, uh, the peace treaties, uh, distribution of, uh, of, of the gains of, of war. Uh, but if you look down to the level of society and individuals, then you, need, you look into personal stories mm -hmm. of, of what happened. And maybe the viewers are not very much aware of what's Cyprus history. So let's let briefly say that, you know, in 1974, there was a foreign invasion 
uh, by by Turkey military invasion that uh, captured and occupied uh, almost 37 percent of of the land and displaced some 200,000 people. There were a lot of missing persons, and there are a lot of victims uh, from 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 the war. Of course, before 1974, there, there was another wave of tragedy in Cyprus with the intercommunal strife. But what um, made this so uh, tragical uh, was 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 the, was the Turkish invasion. So so let, let me let me give you an example and share a story with you, which is maybe uh, the first time that I would talk about that uh, publicly. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've been reading and hearing uh, stories about victims. There, there are many kind of victims of that uh, of that invasion. So there are the, the refugees, the internally displaced people. Uh, th there were uh, the main people, people who people who were injured in the war, uh, the families of these people, the families of people who lost their lives, uh, the, fam the, fa the families of, of people who, who have missing people. But there's also a category uh, that was not uh, taken seriously to attention. This is a tragedy. This, this is the women who were raped. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about hundreds uh, of, of women. And lately, about a couple of years ago, three years ago, um, a friend invited me and showed me an archive uh, of that of that situation. So I, I came across testimonies of women who were uh, raped, testimonies to the police. Mm -hmm. And I was shocked because I thought that there is no, uh, there is nothing concrete left behind uh, out of this crime because as lately uh, the international community recognized um, uh, rapes, uh, is, rape, raping is used as, as, as a weapon. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, to intimidate the population, to terrorize. It's, it's, a, it's a weapon of terrorism. So, um, so all these women, uh, their stories, uh, of course, is a very sensitive issue, uh, but their stories never hurt, uh, never tackled. There was no justice. So you, you can imagine uh, the, the psychological and the health, health impact the impact on their health mm -hmm. and of these individual women and and their families, and and their and their surrounding uh, the people, their friends, uh, for so many years, and only very lately the government uh, of Cyprus, uh, the Republic of Cyprus, made a decision to address that issue. But it's too late, uh, uh, you know, um, for 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 that too little for for, for addressing such uh, an issue. Um, and to complete this this story, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, somehow a year or some months later, I was part of of, of a PhD committee uh, with a student uh, who who talked about a number of uh, her, her dissertation was was about um, how uh, public administration addresses um, women. Uh, the role of women in public administration, and one of the chapters was about this uh, this issue of of of, of the rape women, and mm -hmm. and 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 how the government addressed or failed to address. Uh, so so this is a tragic example to illustrate that it's not only decisions that governments make that may affect public health or individual uh, health in the very end, mm -hmm. but decisions that governments fail to make. To make. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, so th this is um, you know the interplay between uh, politics and health uh, again emerges as a very important and substantial issue which must be thought um, deeper. I, I believe. Mm -hmm. And I know now with the I'm going to shift a bit the attention here, but I know now with the pandemic as well, there's been some decisions and, and the vaccines, like uh, there's been some bargains between countries. Uh, uh, like political, like I'll give you the vaccines and you do this. And um, it's another illustration here on how you could use like healthcare, like you can use the health of the people in a bargain to make a political decision. Yeah. Uh, this is not the first time, uh, you know, um, the developing world, you know, the poorest countries of the world who are mm -hmm. dealing with a number of, of issues of public health. Uh, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a political, economic bargaining 
uh, you know, and how to provide them with essentials for their population to to survive. So, uh, you know, uh, all these things are not innocent, but in 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 this in the in the sphere of public governance, we have so-called international public governance, which mm -hmm. are the international organizations, non-governmental organizations, who try to help uh, these countries to uh, to become better, to survive uh, under better uh, standards of, of 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 health, of of uh, of prosperity, and and growth. Uh, but but unfortunately. Uh, looking deeper and deeper and is, is as you say is like what happened with 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 the uh, vaccines uh, so um you know more or less in, in many domains that um, an individual a lay person may think um, you know the medical trade is part of of, of a greater uh, political uh you know um, game mm -hmm. uh, so to speak so in in, the, in that sense, um, you know, um, you know, everything we do in life is is politics because it involves uh, power relations, it involves uh, interest and uh, bargaining, uh, negotiations. Someone wins, someone loses. Mm -hmm. uh, so the idea or the ideal of Western societies like ours, um, like Europe. Um, United States, Australia, and, and many other parts of the of the developed of of, of the of the uh, of the world that uh, it's um, you know it's uh, wealthy and and prosperous, um, you know, is that um, health is seen or must be seen as the treatment of an individual. Uh, but if you see the bigger picture, it involves much more than than that. Mm -hmm. uh, it involves uh, politics. Uh, you know, pharmaceutical uh, industry is part of, of political lobbyists and all that. Uh, so, uh, for 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 every individual, what is of interest is to be healthy, is to address my my personal issue. But behind all that, there is some complexity. Mm -hmm. No, I totally agree. And um, what you said about this individualized approach to politics. I think that's something uh, very interesting to think about because we also have this in medicine, like what they teach us now is personalized care. Like look at the person, look at his surroundings, who's his family, what is most important for him now? The same could be applied to politics, um, like um, on a more general approach. And you could see what you said before, I'll take us back. Like when your people are not happy, then bad things will happen. I've just made it more simple. And you could, I think you could see this with the both of the world wars, like before, uh, in Germany, the situation with healthcare and finance, of course, was really bad. And I yes. don't know, what do you think that yeah, was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Germany is a good example, you know, and, uh, you know, the interwar period. And, and, you know, again, you know, social conditions, if uncontrolled, if misery prevails in society, then uh, this is a uh, playground for extremists. Uh, and uh, extremists, um, you know, will always think of of bad things for for others. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, this will take us back to early two thousands with the terrorist attacks on, on the United States and what and what preceded and what followed and what is the situation right now. Um, so, um, social wealth is a general concept that entails uh, health care and and. Uh, but it's, it, so, it, but it's just one pillar of it. But on the other hand, we cannot see social wealth, you know, as individual pillars. We have to maintain a holistic uh, approach uh, to that. So, so it, 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 in short, when you think of public policy, uh, you have to think all elements of of the prosperity of of the individual, of each one individual, but. Society does not consist of individuals standing next to one another. Uh, society uh, comprises of relations among uh, individuals. So, uh, healthy societies, in in all respects, you know, um, you know, natural health or social health or psychological health, are more stable societies. Uh, so, so health uh, is part is part and parcel of of should be part of parcel of, of political. Uh, considerations of, of public policy. Mm -hmm. So we talked about how politics affects 
population health, let's take the vice versa now. How population health uh, affects politics. And I want to talk about specifically how the health of the president can affect the decisions he makes mm -hmm. about the people. And I'll, I'll go on a limb now and ask, should the, um, because it's something so important in the political decision that's, that he makes, should the, pub, should the health records of a president be publicly shared before he runs for presidency mm -hmm. or any other political leader which takes decisions? Yeah. Yeah, two things. Uh, there, there, there is a book, a very well known, Six, Pe Six People in Power. Uh, it's a book I'll, I'll strongly recommend uh, to, to read. You know, when, when, when uh, you have a sick uh, president or king or mm -hmm. prime minister, uh, then um, the, the, the state would be unhealthy. You know, if, if you have a sick CEO or a sick, uh, you know, president of an organization, of a private organization, then that organization would suffer. The people of the organization will suffer. Mm -hmm. So uh, unhealthy people are, are not unhealthy, you know, in the, in the general um, use, but primarily we talk about unhealthy people in, in, in the mind, so psychological instability. Um, uh, so uh, yes, it's, it's, it's established that uh, when you have people uh, who are leading uh, you know, from the smallest to the largest organization, such as the state, uh, then there is an impact on 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 on, on, on others. Uh, this is uh, very well known and established. So, with regard to the health records, uh, yes, people should know. And but but then you have to define, you know, what what a health record should involve. For example, if if a president is alcoholic, if a politician is alcoholic, then uh, is it that um, a health issue or not? You know, who is to determine that? Um, because you know, in politics, in democracies, uh, who is elected is not a matter of objectivity; it's a matter of subjectivity. You know, people vote for very reasons, someone, and is elected to the presidency or mm -hmm. to the prime ministership or uh, to any other position. Uh, it could be a governor, it could be a mayor, it could be you know, a member of, of, of the parliament. It could hold a, a number of positions. Uh, but people don't vote uh, more thematic, will not focus on one or the other. Um, they see the, the, the package. So the level and, and the standards vary from society to society. So there is a general saying suggesting that the people would have the quality of politicians they would deserve. Mm. Um, so, um, you know, a healthy society will, 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 will elect, would elect healthy uh, leadership. An unhealthy society will elect unhealthy leadership uh, if we are to generalize. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but again, this must be empirically um, you know, um, look into uh, for for you know, but there there, there are uh, there are examples. Um, so, so let's take up one example, maybe, uh, uh, which is uh, corruption. Mm -hmm. You know, corruption is, to my mind, uh, the unhealthiest. If I may use or coin this word, the, the unhealthiest state uh, in a society. Mm -hmm. uh, so corrupted societies, uh, societies with corrupted leadership or corrupted society, uh, because as I explained, there is an interplay between leadership and society. Um, you know, you cannot have uh, a society that, that does not afford corruption uh, shall not have corrupted leaders. Mm -hmm. And the opposite, a society that uh, uh, will accommodate and enjoy somehow the the benefits of, of corruption, corruption they would not mind you know <laughs> uh, so um, so going back to my to my argument uh, you know uh, when you see a society uh, with uh, abandoned corruption then that society suffers from a num from a number of of unhealthy situations in society in institutions. Uh, in politics, uh, in economics, in standard of living, uh, in, in education, and, 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 and many other uh, 
domains. There are exceptions, uh, but again, um, there, there is this distinction between looking into individuals and looking into social structures. And again, uh, social structures uh, comprise of the way in which people relate uh, to one another. Uh, so the way we relate to one another creates uh, institutions, creates uh, social uh, structures. So um, it's like, let me give you the simplest example I, I could think. Slave and master society uh, st st relationship. There can be a slave if there is a master, but there cannot be a master unless there is a slave. And for as long as a slave recognizes someone else as their master, then that relationship may be sustained. Mm -hmm. But there is a variation into that. Uh, um, a slave may recognize the role of a master to someone else out of interest, because uh, that's a relationship that gilds some benefit to them. Uh, so this is a very well-established and sustained uh, structure. Uh, there is a second uh, option that uh, a slave will uh, see that as a, a convenient situation. You know, it's it's the way of going through life. You know, I don't like it, uh, but, you know, I, I don't know anything else. I don't know any other role to impersonate, mm -hmm. but to be someone's servant to someone else. And there is a third, the third option, which is, um, you know... Um, the worst one say that someone will think that uh, having masters and slaves it's normal. It's an institution that uh, uh, that you know should be acceptable because if this is how things. Someone is born a master to be a master. Someone is born to be a slave. So it's normality. So um, so you see that social structures um, have variations. Uh, so if you look into a society from that standpoint, then you get to understand more things, that the social process uh, is what people make of it. Uh, but uh, a social process is informed or, 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 uh, or shaped by the social structure, by pre-existing social structure, uh, as, as Marker Archer uh, once wrote, by the long dead people. So the way, you know, you may have all dreams and all potentials to change or you want to change society, uh, but, but, but what you are about to change is not uh, you are way of thinking. It's the way of everybody else. So, it's, it, so a social structure, so talking about corruption, level of corruption may change if people stop reproducing corrupted relationships. Mm. Uh, so for as long as corrupted relationships are reproduced, then the social structure of corruption will re-emerge uh, in a society. So more or less all societies went through some stages or levels of corruption. Some societies escaped and became more healthy in, in, in their uh, relations. Uh, and some others could not and do not and maybe will never escape uh, corruption. And, and let's get into an example from your uh, trade, which is health. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about Cyprus, that we are in Cyprus. Uh, now we have, um, you know, the general system of healthcare, general healthcare system. Mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, how did that emerge? Uh, that emerged out of, 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 of an external shock uh, of economic depression uh, that forced the government of Cyprus to enter a program uh, under the auspices of foreign institutions, European Union, uh, the IMF, and the European Central Bank. Mm -hmm. So uh, to state it simply, uh, the state of Cyprus uh, was solvent, uh, was, um, you know, it, it bankrupt. Mm -hmm. uh, so it wanted to have, you know, to, uh, to serve public needs and uh, to run the public financial needs in either the external systems alone. So uh, then these three institutions jumped in, uh, the IMF, the European Commission, European Central Bank, and they established a program of adjustment. So, and they realized that uh, the healthcare system of Cyprus was very, very problematic, very, very costly and unsustainable. 
So uh, an obligation that Cyprus um, um, accepted through that process that emerged in 2013 until 2016 was to establish a general healthcare system. Uh, so, uh, so behind the, unsustain- the financial unsustainability and the problematic way in which the social the, the healthcare system was run in Cyprus was a corrupt system that you know uh, to get a bed into the hospital you need to call uh, some some politicians to to arrange. So mm. politicians were very much involved into the healthcare system, and they were uh, to call uh, many many decisions that doctors should have called. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so, so the idea, one of the ideas, one of the goals was to uh, disengage uh, political intervention into the healthcare uh, system. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, new independent institutions were established, like there are everywhere in the world. But Cyprus has embedded social structures of corruption and intervention, political intervention in the in the in the medical. Uh, system. So the stake here, or the challenge is, would these in, in new institutions escape from that structure, so that political structure, and run a healthcare system that will be uh, transparent, independent, and fair? Or will it have elements of the previous situation? Um, and what we hear, what we read every day is that Things are not doing any better than uh, than, than previously. Uh, of course, now it's an extraordinary situation. It's an anomaly. You know, the COVID situation. You know, uh, postponed the the growth of this, the development of that new healthcare system. Mm-hmm. So it was not tested under normal conditions yet. But from what we hear, uh, you know, there is still a lot of political uh, intervention and involvement. Uh, into hospitals, doctors, and and many other and many other um, you know elements of the healthcare system. Uh, so that's that's a big, a very big challenge. And again, uh, establishing independent institutions is not enough. Uh, what needs what we need to see is is to is the the uh, to use uh, you know a lovely term coined by. By Martin Archer again is the for morphogenesis of the social structure. So to see, you know, the level of corruption and intervention to be lessen and lessen and lessen until it's not acceptable anymore uh, to to people. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's a good example, I think, to see again the interplay between the two. Indeed, and it's exactly what you said. It comes back to what you said before. Um, how people think, the interactions they have with each other, if they produce, keep on producing this corrupted uh, interplay. Um, yeah, I want to go to uh, to another question now. Let's shift focus to you mentioned before that when say uh, you you have some bad people and these people lead other people to extremism. But um, as I have seen again uh, with the stories now that you hear in the news, anti vaxxers and vaxxers, or with the right and the left. Um, I, I just get the feeling that people like to be polarized. People like to go to the extremes. I don't know. They think they belong somewhere. Is that true? What's your take on this? Yes. Um, listen, I, I, I think that it's normal. You know, when you have extraordinary times, you know, there is uh, polarization, unavoidable. There would be polarization. We should expect that polarization to happen. Uh, and uh, and this is you know this is an evanescent situation that will go away once you know this pandemic is taken under control. Uh, so about vaccines, you know, um, of course you should to look into the broader picture, you know, of, of how people communicate their view, how people learn. Uh, you know, this is uh, very well known by now that the social media play a tremendous role. Mm-hmm. They have a, a, a substantial impact. Into that, oh, societies have been always like that, suspicious, and they were. It was very difficult to trust uh, science and and ach- scientific achievements. But you know, people don't have the chance to communicate in group, so we have a number of virtual groups, 
at the moment who community exchange they, they become you know societies on their own and they have the means to communicate and take action you know from one perspective this is healthy you know to have societies who are asking questions mm -hmm. uh, but when this comes to fanaticism for or against uh, then you know uh, you have you know political systems within the political system you have the the former political system where you see you know politicians debating in the parliament or the council of ministers or in the government's cabinet uh, you know uh, about lockdowns about vaccination uh, about restrictions and all these things uh, so this is conventional politics but you have another political environment which is more dynamic beyond that so this this uh, this political um, system and the subsystems have impact that are beyond the control of conventional politics. Mm -hmm. um, so um, this is modern societies. Uh, you know, uh, technology enter, and then this is what you come up with. So this is the challenge to see whether democracy uh, could update to accommodate that. Or whether we will live into um, uh, societies uh, which are democracies by name, uh, but not uh, democracies uh, in action. Namely, they don't involve the people because people are involved beyond the system because the system um, um, does not address their uh, their needs and their thoughts and their considerations. So. The question is how we accommodate this complexity, because if this goes, you know, far beyond uh, the contr control as, as 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 now, and and you have, you know, the majority of society thinking that uh, conventional politics is not part of my life because they're not affect my life, uh, so I will live my own in my own world in my own political system, you know, talk to my like-minded. Mm. Uh, so where this will end. Uh, so that this is a you know the pandemic the latest pandemic was a very good test uh, to um, to see all thing all these things but so now it's time for researchers uh, you know to you know to relax to take a step back and look into the situation and and, and draw the right lessons and prepare um, uh, the states uh, for the next one because so far. The only effective, organized society, player society we know is the state. Uh, uh, the alternative is anarchy, anarchism, mm -hmm. uh, and it's a very interesting concept to look into. Uh, you know what anarchists think? Anarchists think that we can make uh, our lives better off without having authority. Uh, so, so this uh, dynamic has a lot of elements of, of, of anarchism, uh, but political anarchies, not anarchist activist anarchists. Mm -hmm. You know, people who are you know destroying cars or burning banks, and they say we are anarchists. No, not this kind of anarchist. I'm talking about societies who think more and more about the idea of living their political lives without having political authority in the conventional uh, way that we know it. Uh, today, uh, so this is um, you know this um, uh, makes um, subjectivity uh, the, the dominant force in society, and, and this again comes against your trait, you know, which is science, you know, is is what it is because there are laws and there are tests and there are experiments and there are conclusions and there are you know. A number of stages for corroboration or falsification. Um, uh, so uh, there is some kind of objectivity that we come into conclusion that, you know, we can treat people uh, using these tracks, these methods, this. Mm -hmm. So, but if societies stop believing in any kind of objectivism, of objectivity, or of science, uh, then what happens? Uh, so and, and, and I mean I don't say that this is the dominant uh, posture, social posture at, at the moment, but uh, you know there are uh, there are dynamics that show us that we are getting there sooner or later. So we need to draw some conclusions now, some lessons from these extraordinary times, 
because these are not um, it's, it's not as yet conventionalized this mm -hmm. so when these new anarchies is conventionalized then uh, uh, then uh, we will live in a new world uh, in, a, in a new world that has uh, rules that are not the rules that we know the social rules and social norms we know now uh, so there is a big challenge for your trade, uh, which is science. Uh, you know, my trade is it's a combination of art and science. So we play with both, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't play with, with uh, nat natural laws, uh, but we have some, say, methods that are acceptable to the community, and we have a way to, you know, to corroborate or falsify theory or analysis. Uh, but, you know, it, it's an open-ended debate. But your your field, your your trade is completely based on on rules that uh, that uh, that uh, looks for uh, objectivists for for getting into knowledge of of, of reality. Uh, so, uh, for example, COVID it's a virus uh, that has a structure and has uh, you know a way of being produced and a way of die uh, that can be tackled and and. and dealt with. Mm -hmm. So there is a way to know exactly what that thing is. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, science. But, you know, in, in my trade, there's no way to, to to talk about, you know, how societies behave, what would be their dominant uh, options, positions, um, and, and so on and so forth. So, the, the, you know, the pandemic, it's extraordinary, but still shows that, you know, uh, people attempted uh, to re to reject um, um, objectivism, so so the last time we we've seen that as dominant was in the Middle Ages. So uh, and so we 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 cover some ground, and we you know we tend to see uh, time as progressive. So scientists, you know, from Middle Ages they came to the Enlightenment, and then. Uh, to the industrial revolution, to agricultural revolution, industrial revolution, technological revolution, mm -hmm. artificial intelligence, and we go forward. So we are very close to get to know what the world is really made of. But human beings are far from perfection. <laughs> uh, and, 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 and this is, you know, this is what politics is. You know, my trade is about politics. Politics is about a strife uh, of interest, power, uh, imposition, uh, agreement, uh, betrayal, mm -hmm. and, and, and all this about. So, uh, and again, so I want to raise again my initial point that, you know, um, there must be better communication, better understanding between doctors and political scientists. And so it's it's an interdisciplinary. And what's the linkage between all that, as, as I've been talking or implying in my in my statement for some uh, time now, it's about you know the way that we can link the sciences and and, and the fields and the trades is is through you know some uh, help from philosophy of science you know the foundations. Mm -hmm. So we need to go back to the foundations and and think again harder about what we do and why and how, and 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 look more open up the interdisciplinary approach into uh, into our. Uh, domains some food for thought and um it's very interesting indeed um i'm not gonna lie i did get a bit scared when you started talking about anarchy and how the people are we could see this movement because i, I can actually see it now like looking back indeed there's been this rejection of objectivism like you said um hopefully the the right changes will be made and we won't come to that state um, I'd like now to ask, um, let's do some personal questions now so we can, uh, um, that's going to be okay with you. Yes, yeah. please. So, go ahead. uh, do you agree that talented people are not getting involved in political parties and politics? It's difficult to say, uh, you know, what is a talented pe person? You know, let me state that way. Uh, you know, people who are successful in our work in our in their field you know and they're recognized uh, you know because uh, politics involves a lot of elements of recognition 
and, and, and a lot of elements of service. So the question is why someone would get into politics to serve or to be recognized, to get attention or to give um, something to, to society, to offer something mm-hmm. uh, to society. So talented people could be talented for, for good or for bad. I think there are a lot of talented people in politics, but for the wrong, for, for the wrong uh, reasons. reasons. Uh, I think there, there are less and less people in politics who would like to serve uh, the, the, the society. So for me, to get into politics, you need to fulfill some criteria. Uh, first, you have to be successful in your domain, recognize full, you know, uh, of, of that, and not to be a, in any kind of economic hardship. Uh, so you should get in politics only when you are satisfied uh, and you feel full of, of achievements. Uh, so that will protect you from, from, from uh, you know, from uh, corruption. And, and, and I'm talking about from the background of, of, of Cyprus, uh, you know, uh, situation. Mm-hmm. So talented people, uh, you know, uh, talented people who would like to serve are very much disappointed. And yes, they are not involved that much into politics mm-hmm. and, and political parties. Thank you. Um, wh- what is the most important thing for you in life? Uh, I think it's very simple. Happiness. Yeah. Uh, happiness in a very simple, in a very simple way. I think most people would agree with you. Yeah. In, in, the, in the simplest form of everyday small things. An appreciation of those. Yes. Socrates used to say, um, like, uh, the key to happiness is being able to uh, be fulfilled with less and less. Be happy with less and less. Yes. This is um, wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> indeed. Uh, who do you admire? Who do I admire? Uh, you know, there are a lot of people to admire. Uh, you know, I admire people uh, who are honest uh, with their uh, weaknesses and strengths. You know, and and people uh, who uh, come across uh, the moment of the difficult decisions, and they don't uh, wait or they don't afraid to make that certain decision. So, so I would say that uh, you know I I admire the people who are I consider the founding fathers uh, of my state, and these are uh, you know the heroes of the liberation uh, struggle of Cyprus. Mm-hmm. Uh, to name some Afghan Diu Baligari, these may be names that the, the audience will not know, uh, but these are people who you know who came across, you know, a decision of life or death and death, and 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 they not they're not scared to die to serve you know uh, the highest purpose, the highest ideal, uh, uh, selfless, uh, and 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 this is uh, you know the, that comes to my mind right now. Um, indeed. Um, what is your favorite book? Oh, <laughs> yeah, there, there, there are, are a lot of books to uh, think. You know, now, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle of, of, of two fields, as I said. Uh, you know, I, I would say, uh, you know, the first book that I completed, um, there are a few books that I read on one seat. So uh, the one is uh, of Kenneth Waltz, Man, the State and War. You know, that's it's purely from, uh, from, uh, from, uh, um, from international relations. And another one is from Paul Joyce, uh, who, uh, who came to be, you know, a friend. Uh, it's, 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 it's one of the gurus in strategic uh, management. Mm-hmm. And his book in 2000 uh, was strategic, pub, uh, strategic uh, planning in the public uh, sector. Uh, so these are two books that I like a lot because this, I, I found them to uh, sort of shaping my thinking in these uh, two fields. Mm-hmm. Um, going back to what we said before uh, with the health of the political leaders, and you mentioned the book with the, uh, with the six political leaders. Uh, there's another book that's nice to... Um, uh, let's say to bring up here, it's David Owen's um, Hubris Syndrome. 
Um, this is a, he basically talks about this is a, a, a syndrome that is now certified as a mental illness, DSM-4 criteria. And um, he basically uh, goes into detail about this syndrome that political leaders um, come to um, fall into and has some because of this power and this narcissism and this, um, let's say, uh, this need for recognition, like you said before. And it's a very interesting read. And it goes into, let's say, the, uh, the last 100 uh, UK prime ministers and US um, political leaders, etc. So, yeah. Um, what about favorite movie? Uh, let me let me just short comment on what you said. You know, there are two old saying, very old sayings that, you know, power corrupts. And, 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 and uh, you know, Montesquieu uh, was one of the first, of course, it was before him was uh, Machiavelli and before before him it was Heraclitus uh, mm -hmm. who talked about these things more or less. Uh, but, you know, uh, power corrupts, you know, uh, it's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's something that, you know, it tested, you know, it tests you when you get power, you know, what to do with that. And that with, with greater power comes greater responsibility or with great power comes uh, great responsibility. Uh, favorite movie you said? Yeah. Oh, you know, these days um, we, 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 uh, we tend to look more into, you know, uh, series and, and, and... What about a series, favorite series? Ah, uh, The Blacklist. The <laughs> yes, I like I like this. You know, it's the psychological drama. Of that. This was late. That was one of the latest. You know, but the movie. I, I think it's 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 one. Um, uh, it's I think it's called K Pax. I, I didn't see many movies in my in my life. Uh, I think it's K Pax. I think it's, it's it's the title of that. It's 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 a great. I think it comes to my mind now. It's one movie that I've seen. You know, a couple of times. I'll look into it because uh, I don't know it. Uh, <laughs> I think it's 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 an imaginary planet with someone coming to Earth from that. But it's it's behind that it's it's a psychological drama and involves psychologists trying to to come to terms with with a patient uh, who uh, who presents uh, himself as someone coming from another planet to Earth. And why I like this movie because it's 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 it's, it's not as you know the scientific fiction. Uh, which is, uh, you know, uh, very extremely presented. I've seen uh, some of them, but that one is, is you know, is is it humanizes, uh, you know, uh, you know, a lot of questions that people have. Uh, that uh, you know, about, for example, you know, what we would do if uh, if our planet is not, you know, we cannot survive on, on planet Earth. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, and and and, and a question like that that people are asking, or uh, and you know about many other things. So this is a movie that I think that addresses a number of questions by not, uh, you know, by exaggerating oh. or imposing on you the answers. Understood. And we'll go to our last question. Yes. Um, so what advice would you give to your younger self and to let's say our viewers out there and to even like say healthcare professionals? You know, I'm not good in giving advices. Uh, <laughs> you know, maybe uh, to report to repeat uh, the word of caution that you know I, it, I I've read a lot. Uh, you know, I, you know, you know, part of my readings, a lot of readings uh, involve you know um, uh, philosophy of science, and I came to conclusion that you know that uh, you know uh, we need to be more interdisciplinary. I know that this is not new, uh, and you know everything now. All, all, all journals, you know, all mostly all books and all you know fields of study, you know, tend to look into other sciences. Uh, by the way, the greatest theories uh, of of international uh, relations mm -hmm. uh, were based on very successful uh, scientific theories of other traits. Mm -hmm. As well as the most successful uh, takes uh, on and developing field. That's why I entered this field of strategic management uh, because I found it to be underlabored and under theorized. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know uh, the, the 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 challenge is to learn from successful paradigms to go to use uh, 
Thomas Kuhn terminology. So um, I think that a word of caution is to try to uh, communicate better, you know, uh, different fields when it comes to the actual real life, you know, when we have to make real decisions for real life situation like what happens right now with the pandemic, uh, we need to, um, you know, we need to um, learn to communicate better uh, with 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 one another, and uh, learn to listen uh, better than to talk more. You know, to listen more and talk more. I think this is a very powerful message, and um, it illustrates what we have done here today, uh, where we brought the political sciences, let's say, and the healthcare sciences to see what we can learn from each other. Thank you, Andreas, for having me. Uh, best of luck. Uh, with this podcast series uh, and best of luck with with your studies and uh, I, I hope to see you soon again. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much and all the best to you too. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>